Greetings questers! Here in the next tutorial we're going to talk about creating a, in this instance, a non-player character for Dungeons and & Dragons. And I'm simply going to add a new character, and this is going to be an actual giant rat. One of my favorite creatures in the world, as my players can attest to, uh, there is no such thing as a TPK with giant, giant rats. Don't ask my players. So there is an option for importing data based on D&D uh, uh, &D Beyond. If you copy a stat block from D&D &D Beyond from one of their pages, you can simply use this import feature to do that. This isn't 100% perfect because those stat blocks are very wildly different in a lot of cases. So I'm trying to give it the best I can, but it works for most cases. So the thing that you have to do before you can even do that is you have to pick a character sheet. So I'll pick the NPC. I will come in here, you know, I'm going to put him under a monster and maybe we'll animal to give him a category and then simply put, I'm going to use this import feature and add him to my list. And right here, you'll see this D&D Beyond stat block. I intend to add more options here so that more people can actually import from various games and various stat blocks and things like that. I'll simply paste the stat block right in here. You'll see I've copied this right off their main page. It has these values and I'll simply hit import and you'll see it imports it very quickly, makes it easy to import some monsters from D&D Beyond and lets you go straight in. Now this has been saved. My giant rat exists and I'll simply go and I will try to find a picture for my giant rat. All right, now that I've found my giant rat, I will simply drag the image right over here. You'll see that, you know, the image is, is slightly different. So I'm going to resize this so I can actually just get a picture of the head, which would give me a good view of the token. This is a general rule of thumb for how I end up building thumbnails for these. And I'll simply do that. I now have my NPC, all the data is saved. I'll simply hit save here. It's going to upload my image. I will hit back. And now you can see I have a monster under this item and I have a giant rat. Now, the thing that you can use here is the ability to search and I can simply say, you know, I want giant or I want to say rat or I can type the letter A and E. So it gives you a great way to be able to search what you want. You also have the option to have any creature and you can archive them at any point. There's no such thing as hard deleting in Questline because there are times where you may have a creature that you used two years ago and that may be somewhere uh, linked in the chat. So we do a simple, what's called a soft delete and it actually just archives all the records and puts them in storage. And essentially you can always reference them no matter where you are. And that is just simply if I show the archive, it'll show you any character that's in the archive and you can take them out of archive if you so wish. That being said, I'm simply gonna drag this token onto the map and you'll see now I have a giant rat on my map. And now this allows me to set up a couple of things for uh, the players. Um, I can also hide this uh, based on the permission settings of characters. I can see that this is currently protected and I can actually see that if I come to the settings and decide to make it private, no one other than the game master can see this character now and it is private and they won't ever see this in the list of characters. I can also decide if I want to edit this map and come in here. I can simply take this, I can hide the token, and the players will not see this until I decide that it's uh, a good time to bring them out. And that's a good introduction to being able to add NPC characters or other, other types of characters that make it easy for you to be able to do something like an NPC from D&D Beyond. It's very easy to import this and some of the other settings and how some of these settings work. And specifically speaking, if you ever wanna worry about the privacy levels, privacy levels work uh, in a number of ways. Private means that only the game master can see it and edit it. Protected means any user that I have picked in this list can see it or edit it. Uh, in the case of the list, those that are not picked can actually see the item in this in the character list behind us can actually see it if it's protected but they cannot edit it and anything that is public is simply public and everyone can edit delete or whatever but this also controls whether or not somebody can move a token on the map so if i make this protected only the people that are stored in this list can actually move this token 
There is no specific token instances, so there's nothing I can do here to make it so that you can only move this one token. It is based on the character on the list. And that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. Keep questing.